All right, hi everybody. My name is Zoe Sargent and this is my lab mate, Ava. And we're here today to tell you a little bit about developmental psychology. So like I said, my name is Zoe. I am a third year in the program here at UVA and I'm particularly in the Jazzwell lab. Our lab focuses on the social experiences of autistic people. And in my research, I'm especially interested in the development of stigma and prejudice against autistic people. Um, and the way I've been approaching that in my research so far is researching how, when, and why young non-autistic kids come to stigmatize their autistic peers, um, as well as some potential influences that we could um, use to reduce this stigmatization. I decided to come to graduate school because I'm really interested in research and um, I wanted to gain more education in my field, even though when I was coming to grad school, I didn't have a pretty clear picture of what that would look like career wise after the PhD I knew that I wanted to gain more education and research training um, and consider what kinds of job opportunities would be available after that. Um, when it came to applying for me, I originally was actually interested in clinical psychology and started looking into programs in that area. Um, but the more I learned about psychology and looked into different programs, the more I realized I was really interested in developmental questions and learning about how children develop. So I started looking at more um, child clinical programs or child psych programs and eventually um, landed on just purely developmental programs. I also only applied to one school when I ended up applying to grad school. That was partly because I was considering some other options or taking a year and reapplying to grad school. Um, but I knew that I really liked the program here at UVA and thought I would be disappointed if I waited a year to apply and then there weren't any more open spots in my advisor's lab. So um, that is a big part of why I applied to UVA specifically was because I thought the research fit with my advisor, Vikram Jaswal, was really great. I was excited about the research that he's doing on autism and communication. I also already loved UVA from visiting UVA as an undergrad, even though I didn't do my undergrad here. Um, I really liked just the feel of the university and the academic opportunities provided here. Um, I also liked the developmental psychology area and um, from reading about it on the website, seeing all the different training opportunities that were available to developmental psychology students and psychology students broadly at UVA. Um, and I also just liked the Charlottesville area and liked that I'd be close to family coming here. So that was why I ended up coming to um, UVA psychology. Right. Hi, um, I'm Abha. I'm a fourth year student in the developmental psychology program, and I'm in the same lab at Zoe, uh, the Jazzball lab, where, as Zoe already explained, we study the social experiences of autistic people, and we share the mission of making the world a more welcoming place for autistic people. So my specific research interests lie in the area of investigating people's beliefs and perceptions of autistic people to understand the roots of stigma and eventually figuring out ways to reduce it. Um, so uh, before applying to grad school, I had some work experience in education in nonprofit organizations in India, and I wanted to get into more basic psychological research and investigate its implication in more applied settings. So I did have, I had done my undergrad in psychology and I really thought it was cool and I wanted to sort of return to it. So I started looking into graduate programs, but since I was applying as an international student, there was a lot about the application process that I did not necessarily understand. So things like the kinds of things people are looking for in a personal statement or a research statement and um, um, the fact that you're supposed to get in touch with faculty before you apply to ensure that they're taking students and things like that. Um, so I ended up applying twice to a bunch of research programs. And given that my, uh, you know, my experience fit and everything was just more in line with developmental, I only applied to developmental programs. So uh, the second time around, I did manage to get uh, into a bunch of like get offers from a di different programs, but I ended up choosing UVA because of the variety of programmatic options it had, like you know, cross disciplinary collaborations, like the different like um, the way. Uh, 
the School of Air and other related schools have opportunities for grad students within the GSAS, which is the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. And for its relatively balanced focus on research and teaching, because teaching was, I mean, as much as I enjoy research, I really enjoy teaching too. And I like, I wanted to get some um, um, experience in developing my teaching skills as well. And because I had heard from like lots of trusted mentors and people in the field of developmental psychology, particularly that this is a great department overall, and also a particularly great developmental area. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, so we've already talked a little bit about how we both were interested in developmental, psych developmental psychology and came here for developmental psychology. Um, but I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what we mean when we think about um, developmental as an area of psychology. Overall, um, the APA website kind of gives an overview of developmental psychology by explaining that developmental psychologists study how people grow and adapt over the course of their lives. Oftentimes, this tends to be in the specific context of childhood development, although technically developmental psychology spans lifespan from infancy to gerontology, which is the study of older adults. Um, at UVA, the emphasis among developmental psychology labs tends to be on social and cognitive aspects of development, but there's a lot of different kinds of research that are happening here, um, covering infant social cognition, moral development, autism and communication, as well as just social experiences and stigma, Montessori education, lesbian and gay families, and adolescent social development. So for coursework that's recommended for developmental psych students here, honestly, it's fairly minimal. Um, we do have one developmental pro seminar that covers aspects of cognitive and social development that's required at, at some point in someone's first or second year. Um, and we're also required to take three special topic seminars. But like I said, we've had a bit of an issue um, finding relevant coursework for developmental grad students here. So we're oftentimes encouraged to take courses from other areas in, in accordance with our own research interests and um, in conversation with our advisor. So for example, I took seminars in social psychology as well as anthropology or linguistics, and also took a seminar that my advisor was teaching on psychology and ability and ableism. Um, and in addition to these coursework recommendations, we're also expected to attend developmental lunches, all department colloquia, as well as other relevant talks and research meetings that come up and are scheduled within and outside of psychology. There's not a hard and fast timeline for when we're expected to take these courses, although I've added kind of a suggested timeline here. At some point in the first two years, like I said, we're, we're required to take the developmental pro seminar. Um, I did that the spring of my first year, but I know you did it the spring of your second year. Um, and during those other semesters, it's recommended that you fill them up with other um, special topics. There's also some required courses that I'm sure will have been talked about by now, like Psych 7, 7, 10, and 7, 720 for basic statistical methods, as well as a one credit ethics course and optional teaching and psychology courses that tend to be added in um, first and second years. Ultimately, the credit requirements fall in line with the overall requirements for the College of Arts and Sciences, where we need 30 credits by the time that we're applying for a master's degree. That typically looks like two, three credit seminars during the first two seminars, and then one, three, uh, sorry, during the first two semesters of someone's grad program here, and then one, three credit seminar during each of their second two semesters, which is then supplemented with research credits and other required courses. Um, one more requirement for developmental psychology um, around the time that someone is applying for a master's degree would be the predis, which is kind of a master's thesis or pre dissertation project. Um, we're, we're suggested to start working towards independent research during our first year. Um, and particularly within developmental data collection can take a long time when you're meeting with a bunch of kids. Um, and so my first year project actually ended up being my first two and a half year project um, and turned into my dissertation. 
It's due by August 15th, following your second year. So kind of at the beginning of your third year um, and should be kind of written up as a journal ready article. Um, and so my pre dissertation specifically um, was about how young non-autistic children evaluate the behaviors of autistic children and particularly whether they view um, these behaviors as okay or not. And so I met with 112 kids over the course of about two years over Zoom and asked them questions about common autistic-like behaviors as well as how they would evaluate um, autistic characters and looked at whether labeling the characters as autistic or not would influence children's evaluations. Overall, I found that kids, um, surprisingly to me, said that the autistic like behaviors were okay, so there wasn't much room for the label to influence their evaluations, although they did specifically say that looking away while a teacher was talking was not okay. And for that particular behavior, when I had labeled the character as autistic, that did improve children's evaluations. So that's a bit uh, of an overview of my pre pre dissertation and some of the requirements for the first couple of years. And then Ava will talk about some requirements for people um, in the latter half of the program. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, so the so like Zoe said, you probably are you're typically supposed to be done with your pre dissertation and those aspects that part of your requirements by the beginning of your third year. So August of the before, you know, the third year starts or the August of your third year is when you <laughs> when you're done with your pre dissertation typically. And then uh, by the August of your of the next year, that's your fourth year, you are expected to be done with your comprehensive exams. And um, comprehensive exams have uh, three components in the dev area. There's a depth, breadth, and skills requirement. And um, so we'll go through each of these. Uh, the depth is basically the CADA or the conceptual analysis of dissertation area, which is, um, you know, it just involves you writing a review paper on the topic on which you eventually want to do your dissertation. So um, this doesn't have to be very specific. There is like, you know, room later on to use it to, like sort of explore a more specific direction uh, but this is sort of meant to help you to figure out what the ground looks like and how where you want to see your work where you want to position your work so for me it was stereotypes about autism and in my cara i explored different theoretical frameworks which might help to explain stereotypes and stigma about autism and then i also used it to propose potential research directions or lines of research and then um um, um, we'll get to the breadth and the skills part of it in a bit, but um, you also then are able to use your capstone discussion with your committee, which in which is typically made of three um, uh, psychology professors from UVA, who you know you just get to hang out with them and talk about topics of your interest, which is great, and um, that's a way for you to uh, sort of clarify your ideas and get a sense of where you want to take your dissertation process. So um, that's about the CADA. Uh, the breadth requirement is basically, you know, a combination of everything you've been doing up to the fourth year, which is includes coursework, um, area lunches, um, any manuscripts you may have been working on, any projects you've undertaken. So it's a way for you to sort of demonstrate that you have gained knowledge in the field of developmental psychology. So of, you know, there's a list of areas, um, you know, examples are infancy, education, um, schooling, atypical development, et cetera. And of those, you sort of, you know, have to show that you've engaged with around six of them within development. And then two or three outside of developmental psychology, which are still, which might still be a related field, like cognitive psychology or um, anthropology or culture or things like that. So uh, that's the breadth requirement. And skills, again, this is uh, these are this is a requirement that you you would have fulfilled over the four over the first three years of your graduate training, which include like advanced statistical methods, the uh, stat the basic stats courses that Zoe already mentioned, 
uh, if you've worked on any methodological innovations or if you've sort of gotten a chance at doing physiological kinds of research, including doing um, EEG work or F, like figuring out fMRI or things like that. So that would be included in your skills component as well. Right. So, um, so just going by the past um, experiences of past alumni in the developmental area, they have chosen a range of things to do after their um, um, PhD journey at UVA. Uh, many of these involve like things in academia, including postdocs and then um, um, teaching positions or uh, like more tenure track research positions, which um, so academia is one of the like placing people in academia is something that UVA developmental area has excelled at in the past. But there have been several people who have also chosen to go into industry, including children's media organization, consulting firms, uh, jobs that involve a lot of data analysis and things like that. Um, my personal um, aspirations in this area involve academia, but I also want to uh, be in academia in a different country in India. So um, this is something that, uh, I mean, it's kind of an unusual process. So it's something that I'll still, you know, probably be figuring out, but uh, it's, it feels like UVA gives you enough skills to demonstrate that you would be, you know, competent in the field that you want to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and I am more interested in non-academic jobs, and one way that at UVA that I found to prepare for these kinds of jobs is through the PhD Plus program. Um, and the PhD Plus series basically offers different kinds of workshops and trainings, as well as internship opportunities for students to develop career skills that could benefit them inside or outside of academia. And so I've gone through some different workshops, including career design and data management. I've also applied to some internships um, within UVA, but set up by the PhD Plus program to kind of work in areas outside of um, just the psychology department research training in particular. And so if I get one of those internships, I'd be able to work with um, a center for survey research at UVA or the Women's Center doing different kinds of work that I'm usually exposed to in my psychology training, which will hopefully help prepare me for the kinds of positions that I'd be interested in working towards after UVA. But yeah, that's as much as we have for you today. So if you're interested in following up with us about any of the things that we've talked about so far, our contact information is there on the screen, our emails and Twitter, as well as some of the general UVA social medias. So don't know if you have anything to add as we're wrapping up. No, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for listening and we hope to see you at some point.